like the last thing I want to show you tonight is just your uh, your chin strap. So for a Vietnam chin strap, what you're going to be looking for is a nice example right here. It is sort of this ball and strap here. So uh, the fact I'm trying to use one hand to get a good flashlight in here, uh, I'm not going to take it apart for you and show exactly how it works. It's kind of intuitive once you see it. The reason there's a ball in there is that after World War II, uh, and I guess they actually use that apparently at the very, very end of World War II, but don't argue me on that, I'm not sure. Uh, when you're hitting with the shell burst and your chin strap on, it would choke you. So they added, uh, they added this little ball in. So if it hits you hard enough and you pull on that ball hard enough, it'll pop out uh, of that socket uh, right through the helmet or right through that, uh, that piece. Um, so that's that. And then uh, the very distinctive um, sort of strap right there. Uh, I'm gonna do another video later and I'll show you what the post-war ones look like. They came in, I think, 1972. So you want anything Vietnam, make sure it's got these straps in the, on, the, uh, on the side. Make sure it's got the ball. And if you're looking for anything more World War II Korea, uh, you can see these are actually just, uh, just stitched on. They'd stitch them on for the most part. And honestly, uh, if you do have Vietnam straps that are strapped on uh, with the little metal pieces, try not to take them apart because they get pretty brittle. So you can see here, it's simply just a, just a hook. And that hook, nice it goes in here. And there, it's kind of nice and simple. Uh, the more World War II era ones will have sort of a finer hook. And I'll show you that uh, example in uh, in part two. That'll show if you give you a, a good idea of sort of uh, what a Vietnam chin strap should look like. All right.